Hi there. As part of our study of human resource management, we need to have an awareness of the main non-financial methods of motivation. So it's an interesting question, isn't it? How do you motivate people at work? As we know, business theory suggests two main approaches, financial and non-financial. And the main non-financial methods focus on the way that work is organised for employees and also how they are treated by employers. Now, we're going to take a quick look at eight methods, non-financial methods. Don't forget, uh, your exam board may specify the, uh, the particular non-financial methods they want you to have an awareness of. Uh, don't forget also pause the video as we go through you may want to add notes on each of these uh, to your uh, to your files let's start with the one on the left hand side there delegation now delegation is uh, this happens when you give responsibility for carrying out a task or responsibility for a role is you pass it on to somebody else in the business uh, and typically you pass it on to a subordinate somebody who works for you so delegation giving responsibility for something to somebody else. And of course, if you do that effectively, that can have a number of benefits, not the least. It can reduce management stress and workload. But the motivating aspect of this is that it helps empower and motivate employees to whom the responsibility is delegated, provided that they have the time and the resources and the skills to take on the responsibility. So you can see how Delegation, uh, when done properly, can lead to much better and effective uh, decision making, use of resources, but also it's very motivating. And uh, delegation is also a very effective way of providing on the job training uh, to subordinates. The middle one there, empowerment. Have you heard of empowerment? This involves basically giving employees more control over their working lives. So, uh, for example, uh, organizing employees into an empowered team with quite a high degree of autonomy decision-making power uh, can help deliver empowerment and, and giving employees the opportunities to, for example, plan their own work, uh, decide where they work, uh, giving them responsibility to take their own decisions, to empower them to take decisions and to solve business issues and problems as they come across them. You can see how that is a very effective way of making working life more motivating. One on the right hand side there, last one on this slide, consultation. Consultation is uh, well, it's a process. It's, it's a process of formally consulting with people or discussing an issue. And typically this, this takes place in a business context between management and employees, either as individuals or as we see on the screen there, uh, more commonly between management and groups of employees. And you can imagine that if you're working in a business that regularly and effectively consults employees on uh, key business issues, whether they're good or bad, uh, that can be an, a, a very effective way of uh, improving workplace culture and making it a better place to work, a more enjoyable place to work, thereby helping motivate employees. OK, those are the first three. Let's move on to uh, the next three all starting with the word job, starting with job rotation there on the left hand side. Job rotation, as the as the term suggests, involves moving or rotating employees through a series of different jobs. And the key aim there is to increase uh, interest or reduce boredom and therefore increase motivation. And a, a key benefit of job rotation, again, if it's done effectively, is that it uh, encourages multi-skilling. Now, of course, uh, an obvious requirement of job rotation, therefore, is, is making sure that you've got the train right. There's no point job rotating uh, if you don't have the skills and the abilities to do the jobs, the different train, the, the range of jobs that you're asked to do. Now, in a sense, job rotation is quite similar to job enlargement on the right hand side. We'll come back to that. But basically, job rotation and enlargement, they both widen the activities that a worker or an employee is asked to do. The one in the middle there, job enrichment, this is really about giving employees greater responsibility by increasing the range and the complexity of what they're asked to do and also giving them the necessary authority uh, to do it. So if you like it, mot job enrichment motivates employees by giving them more opportunities to use their abilities and to, and to use their abilities to, to the fullest. And of course, Hertzberg in particular, argued that job enrichment 
uh, should be a central part of motivating employees. You know, Hertzberg was saying that jobs which had a high degree of enrichment would be challenging. They'd contain a range of tasks uh, for employees at different ability levels. And they'd also provide opportunities for achievement and feedback on performance, all of which is motivating to employees. The one on the right there, job enlargement. Um, well, we've mentioned it once already, but this is really about uh, adding extra stuff to do, adding extra, perhaps similar tasks to a job. So in job enla enlargement, the job itself remains basically unchanged. However, uh, you widen the range of tasks that, that need to be performed. So hopefully that motivates by giving employees uh, less repetition, less monotony. And of course, with job enlargement, the employee uh, won't necessarily need to acquire new skills to carry out the additional task. Um, hopefully, they'll just be able to do them. Now, of course, there's a downside with job enlargement, which is that uh, you're just asking employees to do more. So they may they may actually require more financial motivation in order to uh, to take up the offer. Finally, two two last ones there on the screen. So as I say, do double check with your exam board which non-financial methods you need to know about. Uh, teamwork. This is about organising employees into teams. A bit of a clue in the title. Uh, and But the key to making teamworking work effectively is to give those teams autonomy, decision, responsibility for decision making. Uh, you know, allow the team to plan their work, to take decisions, to solve problems to identify the resources they need and to organize and facilitate things. And for sure, set those teams targets and perhaps give them financial rewards for achieving those targets as well. But basically, if you can combine empowerment with team working, that's a very effective way of motivating employees in their day to day work. And lastly, the one on the right there, flexible working, which is the subject of a separate video, an increasingly important aspect of work. Uh, flexible working is quite a broad term which describes quite a number of different employment options that help essentially help employees balance working life with home life. Flexible in the sense that the working arrangements uh, have a number of options that give employees some choice over, for example, things like when they work, where they work, the pattern of working and so forth. And clearly a business that has attractive uh, and sensible, flexible working options is likely to help uh, employees, uh, help help motivate their employees because clearly it's a, it's a big part of making work more effective and hopefully uh, enjoyable. There we go. Oh, wow, we've taken a few minutes there, but we've had a bit of a, a bit of an overview there of the main non-financial methods of motivation. Just a quick word for AQA students. Don't forget that uh, Hackman and Oldham's model of uh, job design, the five key job characteristics, is also very closely related to motivation. And of course, those job characteristics are essentially non-financial methods of motivation. So uh, don't forget, if you're an AQA student, to, uh, to link, if you can, link in Hackman and Oldham's model. If you're answering a question on non-financial methods of motivation, there we go. Hopefully that was useful.